Hi, this is Sheila with Conscious Conversation Central. And today is Monday, March the 12th, 2018. And I'm with my friend Danny Lunacy. Welcome. How are you? Hello. I'm well, we, we just went through this before and I said, Oh, I'm doing great. How are you doing? I know. Um, that's why I did it. That's exactly why I did it, because <laughs> We had an entire conversation just based on saying hello, and we should have been recording. I'm going to start, you know, I, I've actually had a nudge that I should start like a little introduction, and because I have the ability to pause these videos and do it by myself, and then when the folks come online, I just hit record, and we just start because oh, it yeah. time, we start having a conversation that wow, shouldn't we probably be recording this? Yes, we should have. Yeah, well, that's what happened. Well, I had started off saying that, oh, yeah, I'm doing great. How are you doing? And then uh, and then we talked about some pre-programmed behavior, and I said, well, you know, actually, it's been, it's been an interesting week. I guess I'm not, you know, all happy-go-lucky cheery. Um, I'm not really... I'm not down for anything going on in my own journey. What I'm doing is I'm really taking in a lot of observations of people around me and just taking stock of where they're at along their journeys and uh, watching that unfold from the relative pocket of peace that, that my journey is right now. It's a different viewpoint. And, and I've certainly... Uh, been through my own experiences that have a very similar flavor to what I'm seeing everybody else going through. Um, but there's just people are smack dab in the middle of their journeys. Um, I've got friends that are making multiple trips to the ER, multiple friends uh, going to ERs for different reasons. Um, uh, <clears throat> You know, people's parents are dying. Uh, you know, other people are getting wrapped up in, with the system and having to having to do some jail time. And uh, it's it's just uh, you know, it it doesn't have, I would say, a direct impact on my journey, but it has. It certainly has a flavor when. You know, everyone around you is really affected. Yeah, really affected and, and in the middle of just what an intense journey in the arcane jail. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> well, so that, you're kind of making me think of what you're what you're sharing there, because, you know, I don't have a whole lot of we were kind of going over that I have maybe one or two people around me that are having a hard time, but not, not quite what you, what you're describing that you're seeing. Part of that is, you know, because I'm pretty isolated. I have been for years with my illness and all of that. I don't, I haven't had a lot of friends because of my previous illness. And so I didn't have a lot of folks around me really being housebound and bedridden for 10 years. So I'm very fortunate in one way and that in one respect of that. However, I did see something earlier today that makes that what you're saying, what you're sharing here, um, calls to mind what Magenta Pixie just had um, an interview with. I don't know if you're familiar with her. She channels something called the White Wing Collective of Nine, and she her take on it is that um, folks that haven't been on this path or this journey for a very long time or haven't gotten to over a certain number of years deal with their shadow or look at their shadow are having a lot of this shadow come up right now to mm. be dealt with purged and because I know in, in conversations with BZ, the terminology, the, the metaphor that she was using is we're, we're like buckets. And as more of us 
is coming in, there are things that must come out to make room. And um, so in one way of looking at it, I, I, with magenta pexy and I guess others, there are shadows that need to be dealt with. I know I've heard of it as programming too. Um, but, you know, shadow portions of us, because that's the energetic that's leaving. I don't know. That's, it just feels like a puzzle piece maybe from what you're describing and what she, I just heard that right before, you know, we, we met today. Okay. Um, well, that, that, this makes me think, think of a few things. Um, <clears throat> the name that pops up for me is Matthew Kahn and... Oh. Have you heard of him? You... I have. I haven't. I haven't heard anything from him lately, but I have heard of him. Yes. Okay. So, hmm. Oh, uh, maybe about three years ago uh, was when I I first became aware of Matthew Kahn, and at the time I was living about an hour away from Portland, Oregon. And I watched a few of his videos and then saw that he was having a soul gathering in Portland, Oregon. And I went to that and actually met him, shook his hand, talked with him for a while. Uh, but he, his ideas uh, about spiritual development, uh, you know, inner work and ascension uh, really just solidified my journey or, or just blew apart the confusion and and he has just a, a way of explaining things in normal language like you and I are talking about to really shine some light on different facets of these old but spiritual adages that people you know oh you got to start with self-love okay that's great. I'm I'm going to start with self-love. Uh, what, is, what does that look like? What is self-love, you know? And and yeah. so so I really I got the nuts and bolts, you know, the little it's like you got the little blocks with the ABC 1 2 3 on them and and, and he puts them together for you. And he talks about uh, different waves of ascension, first wave, second wave. And back when I was watching him, one of his videos was particularly powerful. And, and he says, people ask me, how, how do I know if I'm, if I'm part of this ascension? <laughs> like I'm getting all choked up just talking about this. And he says, if you're listening to this video, you're part of the first wave of ascension. And the struggles that I see everyone in now makes me wonder, makes me think, is this the second wave of ascension? We've, we've got way showers that popped up before me, just single lighthouses in the middle of the darkness. They woke up the first wave, which I figure I'm in the first wave of ascension, according to, to Matt Kahn. And this is, what, three, three or four years ago that, that I heard this video. And now I'm seeing everybody just in the middle of their gauntlet like, like I was. And so what you're saying about, I, I'm sorry, I forgot. Magenta, Pixie Magenta, is that her name? name? Is, yeah, Magenta Pixie. Okay, yeah, that just, uh, I don't know, there's something in that. There's a huge, powerful, emotional component. You say it feels like a puzzle piece. There's something, there's something there from my perspective. I don't know quite how to label it yet, but yeah. Well, it, the, her, it's, a, it's actually sort of an interview slash conscious conversation with her, really. Uh, there's okay, I'll have to go that, back and watch it. Yeah, there's a gentleman. You can find it on the IUV. That's where I found it. It's also on her own channel, Magenta Pixie. And I'll, I'll put a link, actually, in this video for those who haven't seen it yet, who might be interested to see it. It's about a 45-minute video. 
And, you know, I have come to feel there are lots of us on the planet that, as you said, there's, I actually think the first wave of ascension started way back in the 80s. And perhaps even farther than that, because she says for eons of time, there has been an energetic on this planet, those that have run it a particular way. And, and I know that BZ talks about source going the furthest tra trajectory out to get to know itself in all manner of ways. And what is happening now is a turning and a, a coming back. In other words, she, her, BZ's take on it, and it feels like a puzzle piece to me too, is that Source, wanting to know Source, went out and got as separate as it could in all manner of ways, exploring everything to the nth degree including darkness and separation. And that the darkness and separation got a little carried away in some folks' feeling and thoughts. I don't really know. It would seem to me like it got a little carried away. And now that trajectory is on its way back because I guess everything is cyclical and that kind of makes sense. For every out breath, there's always an in breath. And so it I don't know, energy moves in waves, so it kind of feels at least a part of a puzzle piece for me. Even in, in, in a quantum expansion mode, there would have to be, you know, again, uh, uh, there feels like there's a wave to everything. Whether that's right or wrong, who knows for sure. Um, but I guess the overall thought and feeling about all of this is that the time for that specific energetic of shadow is up for collective review. There are those first waivers, maybe even second waivers, way showers that have started feeling this energy a little early because that's what happens because energy moves in waves. Some were a little more susceptible to it than others. And some, I have known some, who have felt the energy coming and have decided to run the other way because of the work involved. And that's cool too, no judgment. But now that the, that apparently the collective shadow, the glo there's global shadows, individual shadows, all of this according to Magenta Pixie is now up for final purging. And so what, kind of looks like chaos for some who are going through that now because there's no other choice. Um, I didn't realize when I came up with the hashtag all becomes transparent now, I feel that came to me now for a reason. I didn't know when I created that Lisa was in, in the trial repeating the mantra that was downloaded to her that all truth reveal itself now. I didn't, we, didn't, we didn't compare notes on that until much later. Mm. That's obviously to me an energetic that I didn't know anything about what I was doing. But I, can, I personally feel, and I just like a knowing for me, maybe others can't see it, but I can see an agenda a mile away now. And I think even the, those that are going through these chaotic times, like those in your, in your field that you mentioned, I will bet money that they are probably seeing agendas and that's part of the shadow that they're having to deal with. Agendas are being revealed all over the place. Folks are ill because Maybe there's emotional things attached to other agendas that are presenting themselves as illnesses. I mean, I don't know. That's kind of the way I feel about that. I don't, I don't even really know what all I'm saying there, but that's the feeling I get. Yeah. Well, we're just, uh, we're just 
two beings that were brought up in the darkness and, and trying to describe the lightest, the little pinholes are poked in the veil and, and, you know, we just don't have enough information or knowing right now to describe the entire picture other than to say, I see big changes happening like yeah. energetically across the playing fields. Uh, I'm so thankful that right now I'm in a relative pocket of peace along my journey. It's taken a lot of work to get there. Um, and it's really interesting the 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 types of people that that Grace has been bringing into my field lately, and a lot of them have really similar flavors to to what I've gone through. Uh, just gosh, in the past three weeks, maybe uh, <laughs> I've met more retired cops in person than than I have in years and and veterans veterans like like they're coming into my field I got uh and and just people really struggling with with PTSD mm. so they're they're right in the middle of their journey you know where I was you know when I was coming out of that and so I know that part of my journey is just to hold space because I know ultimately what helped me was, was me allowing myself to be where I was so that I could acknowledge what was going on inside me. And so for me to provide that space where they can acknowledge themselves to themselves through the act of telling me that's that's really where where my journey is and yeah it's i feel for them you're helping to process some of that too you realize that right oh yeah i can feel that coming off of you right now that's been the hardest thing for me to actually comprehend but i think i do now that there are those of us that are actually processing some grief and sorrow and, you know, all manner of that sort of I think I think more of us will in in the next little bit here actually as that veil continues to get thinner when the real huge wave hits, the ones that are not at all aware of just the, cause I don't know, I have this feeling that there's, I'm getting a sense that there is gonna come a time, I don't know when, of course, I don't, I don't know where there's going to be full full on remembrance for everyone. Like a wave of just, and it's there. You know what I mean? That would be great. <laughs> well, I, 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 I think that in one way, yes. And then I also think back to <laughs> your and my conversation that actually didn't uh, get recorded for whatever reason that time. Uh huh. And I'm reminded of our conversation of, you know, at that time, I think I might have even said to you at one point that decades of being lied to, and then I think I changed it to hundreds. And then now I, it's really more like, like, like Magenta Pixie said, it's more than thousands of years. Oh, yeah. That, that, that there's been, misinformation, disinformation, wrong information. And I'm not sure why we actually set it up like that for ourselves, other than the perpetuation of separation, the furthest out of separation we could go. And that's cool. Okay. We experienced that. All right. That's, that's fun and all, and all like that. And now, but now, that that game is coming to an end 
And I mean, I've had a little time to process some of the heinous things that we've come to know and understand, you know, sort of comprehend. And I'm given to understand that that's just a tip of the iceberg. And, and we already are, have been exposed to this in our consciousness. And then I think of those that, okay, like you're speaking of. Oh, they've got a journey ahead of them. Oh, wow. And, and so I, I'm seeing that that's, that's what they're referring to. Like Magenta Pixie is saying that that looks like chaos right now. But I know that we're going to be, I mean, I really feel like, uh, after the first few little bit of everybody coming to see, that's why I feel like, like we're seeing a whole lot of folks going because that, that there's room has to be made, right? Those shadows have to come up and be dealt with in some fashion. I'm really glad that you can be there for those and hold that space. I, I really am. I, I feel for you because I feel you're, you are processing I think for more than those in your field, I get a sense of that from you, at least this time. I don't know what, why I'm saying that, but that's a feel I'm getting. Well, there, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of revisiting of my own journey that, that I do when, when I would hold space or have a conversation like a, you know, a real, a real conversation with someone about this stuff. And, you know, that any tears that, that you're seeing on me aren't really about me where I'm at with my journey. Like, like that, that's not the source of the tears. The source of the tears is just, uh, watching somebody else pull themselves out of the same place that I did. That's why I said you're processing yeah. a, a collective. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Because you've already processed your own. And so, I don't know. I, there's, there's a frequency within you that recognizes that at, because you have been through that journey. This is my read again. Yeah. I don't know. But, but, um, as I've seen that in others and, I'm, and there are, I think a lot of us, because I know, I know of someone else that has felt like she has been processing a generational thing within her own family line. And there are those that are doing it for whole collectives i think there are collectives of us that are doing it for collect you know what i'm saying i actually magenta pixie again i'll refer back to something else she said in that video i watched today that from an expanded view when looking at the earth right now uh, and seeing the beacons of light that are shining through those star seeds and way showers that have already awakened it's like it's like a grid i that makes sense to me i mean we used to talk about that once before when i first started having conversations in something called the campfire chat two years ago we talked about wow why is it that so many of us are so spread out we're not very close to each other gosh i wish we were closer and i i said back then i got a feeling we're all spread out for a reason and now to hear her say that it's forming a grid, that makes a lot of sense to me. And if, let's say, you are a person in the area where you are, and there's another person similar to you that has held that specific frequency that you're holding right now, that in your journey you have processed, and you're seeing these folks now in your field that are going through the same thing, and there's going to be someone over here in a different area of the country or the world or whatever that's seeing the same thing. It's a collective 
um, processing or purging that will help because it's almost like a template. None of this is happening in a vacuum. That's the, the coolest thing too. Yeah. I like the, I like the imagery that you've got going on there. Um, the other thing that, that I've thought about uh, quite a bit since it came up in one of our conversations and I forgot the, the label that was given to this particular dynamic, but it was the, the group of monkeys and they hung the bananas up on the ceiling and, and they put a ladder in the room and, you know, the monkeys would climb up the ladder and grab the bananas and the, what the, the zookeeper or the, uh, what the experimenter scientist, uh, uh, decided to change things up. So, you know, hung some bananas up there and then, got a real high pressure water hose and when one of the monkeys walked towards the ladder started climbing it up or started climbing up the ladder just bowled down this monkey with this high pressure hose and the monkey learned that okay every time I go up to the ladder you know I'm going to get sprayed with the hose then the scientist changed things up again and uh, anytime a monkey would climb up the ladder, every monkey got the hose. And so a new behavior popped up among the group of monkeys. And anytime a monkey went towards the ladder, the other monkeys would physically stop them, beat them up. We don't go to the ladder in this, in this zoo. And even after the zookeeper changes or the scientist changes, even you, you introduce one, take one of the old monkeys out and put a new monkey in that's never been sprayed by the hose and they just get beat down every time they try and climb up the ladder to get the bananas. They're a damn monkey. That's what monkeys do. They climb shit and they eat bananas. And they are being held inside an artificial darkness where they're not allowed to be a monkey and they get punished for being a monkey. And even when they haven't experienced a threat, they're just like, Oh my gosh, the other monkeys around me are holding a perception and that's affecting my quality of experience. So how then you can replace all the monkeys so that, Hey, None of these monkeys are aware of the hose. They don't know how this behavior got started, but they're all perpetuating it. Well, guess what? That's what's going on in police departments. That's what's going on in court systems. I, I got indoctrinated into this. This is the way we've always done it. I had to go through this. You got to go through it too. You don't get to eat bananas. I never got to eat my bananas. I didn't get to climb up the ladder. So you don't get to do it either. Exactly. So how... How then, uh, even after the zookeeper's gone, the mad scientist is gone, we got these fucked up monkeys. Excuse my language. Oh, you're exactly right. <laughs> how, how, do, how do we heal these monkeys? Well, the, the only way that I've been able to think of is by having one monkey with enough courage just to keep climbing up the fucking ladder towards the bananas and showing the rest of the monkeys the only thing, the only danger that is that I'm facing by doing what naturally comes to me as a monkey is the rest of you fucked up monkeys. At this point, yes. Yeah. And so, gosh, you know, you just overlay that image, that pattern over society, and and that's that's what we're being asked to unwind. And so really to to have that courage to stand on the high dive to to do the things that that wow brought you the worst judgment the worst punishment the worst pain wow this is this is a big puzzle yes yes it is but every hmm, what i'm seeing and feeling is that every single time it's like because it's not happening in a vacuum, because we are all one and yet singular. Every single time that 
any purging of any shadows is done. Any, any time and every time we all on our own, collectively, together, one-on-one -on -one, like this, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's a template. It's not happening in a vacuum. That's why I view what happened with Heather and Randy in the way I do. That didn't happen in a vacuum either, by the way. Mm -hmm. All of that was a template. I mean, I, I realize that we still have loads of folks out there that are still really focused on the cash and, you know, what all took place and all the legalities of that. But all of that, I'm, I can see very clearly after some of our last um, videos and more and more thinking that I've had about this. I'm seeing metaphors everywhere. I mean, I, I saw... Um, you know, there's a lot in mainstream media. Well, not as much mainstream media. Well, I don't know, because I don't really pay attention to mainstream anymore. I haven't for years, but there was a lot about pole reversal. There's been a lot about magnetic poles shifting on the sun, the magnetic pole wandering on the earth, the magnetic pole, of the moon has flipped a couple of times and things like that. And there's a lot of things that are being played out and even in the, you know, truth or media, things like that, that are all communicating with everyone from my point of view in metaphoric ways about this shift that we're having happen. I really thought that the whole pole reversal thing was very, I was taking it very literally. And I guess it still could be. But if we're all one, including the earth and everything else, then it would seem very real that a pole shift in an energetic manner is what's happening too. And so right along with all of these other things, well, if we're purging the shadow because there's more light coming in that also speaks to shifting an energetic from a darker way of looking at things to a lighter way of looking at things or you know how, how that's held i don't know there just seems to be so much in all of this but i think that's why there's so much coming up all over the place there's so much talk about this event thing too you know that's like everywhere. Well, people want to know what the event is. <clears throat> yeah. Do you remember the, the very short-lived television series called The Event? Yes. Yeah, that had some very interesting overarching storylines in it. And there's, you know, it kind of, well, it, all of this makes me wonder uh, about Project Bluebeam is what it makes me wonder about. Well, yes, me too. But I'll tell you, I've, I've, I've done a lot of thinking about some of these things because I can see now very clearly because, you know, for years and years and years, everyone talked about all the satanic and subliminal messages in the Wizard of Oz and then, you know, the Freemasonry messages in the Wizard of Oz and all these different movies and things. And yes, I, I can see where that's in there, you know, partly because um, they said they would say things like, you know, they have to give notice that this is a free will universe. You can't just go on and do stuff. You have to give notice, even if, you know, and now I really get the whole standing unrebutted thing because notice was given with the UCC thing. Okay. It's all about notice. Right. And but I started noticing too that in everything that was a warning, there was also notice about just how powerful we are. Like in the Wizard of Oz, Dorothy had the power all along. You know, there was also talk in um, the labyrinth about how the Goblin King, how you have no power over me. And all his little illusions started, you know, crumbling away. So in every, every one of these things that have been in the mainstream, I can see, 
I can see those metaphors now. I, I really couldn't see them before, but I can see the dark and the light metaphor in almost every single thing. And there's been, because I haven't been paying attention to the mainstream or entertainment or anything, I'm being told that some of the things that I'm talking about are in this show or this show or this show by some that aren't really, haven't ever really paid attention to anything I've been looking at myself. But now all of a sudden, because I've been doing videos for a year, you know, folks are, oh, well, what's she on about? Let's go check that out. Hey, did you know there's a show like that? I'm like, uh, but see the event, I, I did see the event all those years ago. That was like 2012, I think when it came out. 2012 or 2013, something like that, when, when it was a short uh, mini series on NBC. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Mm -hmm. um, there's something right now, supposedly brand new, starting called Hard Sun, talking about coronal mass ejection from the sun being a, an extinction level event, apparently. No, I'm just rolling my eyes at that. Wow. Uh, I, well, there's, <laughs> like I said, there's. I think there's truth. There's there's truth and fear in almost every one of these things. So that you, I can see where the metaphor of what some might want for to direct the collective to, but there's also information in there that I I don't know. Like I said, there's because somebody else said something to me about some other thing that's been on called the path. I don't know. Like I said, I've, yeah, I've been out of mainstream media for yeah. a while. I haven't, I haven't heard of that. Uh, yeah, now, I guess my comment about, uh, or my reaction to your comment about the, the coronal mass ejection uh, was just that I have really totally tore apart my perceptions about uh, what the, <laughs> the universe and, and solar systems and space. And, and, and I don't, I don't have anything to plug in, in place of that, but, uh, I certainly, uh, I don't, my, my default model of the venue that I'm in is it, it's not, it's not like a spinning planet, you know, in a solar system. I, I, I really don't have, a solid perception to put in place for that, but it just, it, it, it just kind of makes me chuckle to, to see so much fear wrapped up into, you know, coronal Agreed. mass ejection Agreed. and, uh, and even stuff like, uh, wow, there's a lot of fear wrapped up in, in nuclear radiation and stuff too. And there's some, there's some powerful stuff out there, uh, that, that would really, cause people to, to question it and at least say we need to look into this further that appears that we've been lied to about it yeah no i'm in a, a total agreement with you on that i know that there was a you know exactly what the model of what we live in is i got no clue until i can actually see it or know it for myself i got no no stake in that game, so to speak. Um, I know for a, a while I was tracking the sun, the coronal mass ejections from the sun, because I, I once I stopped being on pain medications, I happened to notice, because I was following suspicious observers for a while, and I happened to notice that my pain level increased any time there was a coronal mass ejection or there was radiation coming in supposedly from the, okay. Now, what I also have noticed, because I have tracked that for so long, that my body can withstand a hell of a lot more now than it used to. When those are supposedly going off, I don't have the pain level I used to. So does that mean that that was an energetic that was floating into the planet that my physical cellular body now no, has been informed as how to deal with it? Quite possibly. And uh, it's, it's a puzzle piece that I'm holding right over here very closely for me to, to keep it for examination because I've noticed 
that there have been times when we're under, you know, supposed high electromagnetic storms and my pain level is nowhere near what it used to be when we were under that high of a magnetic storm. So something that used to cause physical pain isn't quite as painful now. Well, you've made a whole plethora of changes in your life. True. So I don't know what I could point to necessarily that would suggest, but because a lot of them have grown stronger, these energetics that are supposedly to come in. If, if the instruments that are used to measure these things can be, you know, trusted to be what they say they are. I mean, you know, that's always a question too, but there's, um, it's like, I, I can tell now more when the, the Schumann resonance is, has increased. I can, it's like, I know the difference. I don't know how to explain this, but because it's like a different, it, it feels different to me. Like if I'm experiencing a different feeling within my body, I have gone to the website that measures that and seen that it's fluctuating very high. Hmm. And then there'll be different times when I feel something else and I can tell it's a different energetic that's supposedly coming from the sun. So there's a difference for me. Is that a perception? Maybe. I don't know. Could be. But Well, I'll be the first to admit that the, that the sun and moon have a market impact on our experience for sure. They, you know, it's our, it, the sun is, is really our, our true source of energy as far as uh, what that, what that light in the sky is that, that comes every day or that, uh, that light that we call the moon at night. Uh, yeah. I, I'm really excited to to find out all about it, but uh, but I hear you about feeling the different human energies as well. Um, sometimes I'll pop on, just go into YouTube, and I'll just find a really really old video, um, usually like of some type of of a sporting event or something like that, and I'll just watch it for the time period piece that it was, and you know, look at the people that, that are in the crowd or the way they're dressed and just their energy, the way they're holding themselves. And, um, yeah, it, you can definitely tell that that was a different time. It's hard to, to grab on to the different places, uh, to really show what's changed. Um, because we can look at the window dressing things. We can tell that, Oh, the style of the clothes has changed, the hairdos changed, but wow, it's the energy that, that people hold in their consciousness. It really shines out through their, through their physical being. And, and I remember the first time where I started to notice that there was physical similarities uh, among people that held certain kinds of energy. And, and, and I was really oblivious as to what was going on behind it. But after working as a cop for a few years on the street, it, something just clicked in my head and there is just, like, like I started to play a little game with myself. Be like, okay, while well, I'm talking with this person, I just, I've got a feeling that when, when I call my dispatcher and run them out, I know that this person's on parole. And, and it like just after so many hundred times of coming into contact with people who are on parole and who are not on parole, there's just these different, a lot of them are facial features, but there's, there's some, there's some commonalities between the kind of energy that people experience when they're locked up in a penitentiary for, you know, an extended period of time and, and what you can see on a person's face. And, 
And a lot of it has to do with just hmm, maybe the muscles tensions and the kind of expressions that come through. But I think a lot of it has to do with uh, whatever they're eating and drinking for that long. Um, you know, they don't have control over, over the kind of, you know, they, they can't have organic food. Um, but there, there's, there's, there's some similarities there that way. And, and I forgot how I was going to tie this back in with, with everything. Uh, well, I'm not sure, but I wanted to offer something that you were talking about there that came in while you were speaking to that. Yeah. I'm, I have a feeling that you, you, you're right about the food portion because that's, that's specific and on purpose. As the energetic that they're experiencing in combination with the food becomes a cellular memory. And therefore, as that cellular memory is held in the body, the food and the energetics of that particular experience gets held in the in the cellular memory similar to okay see this is just coming in for me right now similar to the um the shadows that we were just talking about that are ha that are presenting themselves in your field with folks in your field is what i'm saying it's it's a very similar thing i think those energetics that we each one of us it's like a combination of all of our experiences it's like okay if, the, if they're similar experiences they've been assimilated into our cellular structures as well because what if oh wow yeah because if we're i'm sorry this is coming right now yeah so flow with it if we're if we are melding right a greater portion of ourselves into our cellular structures, right? And becoming a third thing. Cause that's kind of what I, what sort of what is coming through what BZ is sharing and what, what I'm been putting together myself. It feels to me like that's a very plausible thing. More of us or memories or whatever, more fully portioned part of us coming into the physical the older stuff energetically that became part of our cells because i'm telling you i'm i'm experiencing some pretty heavy dna changes in my body that that's a real thing that is plain for anybody to see who's tracking me on video lately um from just a year ago to right now that is huge um and i haven't lost any weight by the way not one ounce really. I mean, I look in the, on the scale and I've lost maybe a total of five pounds and it goes up and down. So things are just changing. There's DNA that's, I don't know. Anyway, my, my guess what I'm saying here is what was coming in is a combination of our programming conditioning gets trapped in our cells as well right? Because as we're growing, every experience that we have, it's like that the frequency that we are, wow, yeah, it's a combination of everything. The, the being that we have are physically, these cells are filled with water, mostly, supposedly, we're 75 to 80 percent water. Water is conductive. And uh, the frequency that we hold will resonate specifically in our cells and in our body. And as we're, as some of these shadows and whatnot, these frequencies are supposedly rising and we're making room within ourselves for more of our light bodies or whatever the all of us, the all that is the soul, the higher portion of us that's, you know, melding in this ascension process, this embodiment that seems to be taking place, then, yeah, that, those, 
I'm, I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I probably just kind of lost that in trying to do a linear explanation of what I was seeing and feeling, but you were talking about how you could recognize an energetic in regards to uh, folks that were on parole when you were still a cop. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that that makes perfect sense to me because the combination of what they're eating and the energetics that are involved in being in that experience which is a collective thing they're they're all in a specific frequency because it's in that soup and i will bet money that the guards that are actually in those situations probably vibrate at that sort of a frequency too because they wouldn't be a match to being in that situation as their guards either so there's i would imagine a specific sort of not the exact same but at least uh, because frequently hmm. there's a lot of overlap between the uh, the law enforcement personnel and then the people that they're labeling as criminals there right. there's certainly a lot of overlap and a lot of similarity I, right. I saw that I saw that plainly um, I'm sure so a lot of that from what I'm give to under, un, you know, try to comprehend and, and get and take on board for myself and what I've been experiencing my own self is that in order to take in more light, if you will. Okay. Light energy or a, a different frequency vibrate vibratory of the, there's, there's things within my cellular structure that have to come out and be expelled or purged or expressed in whatever manner. Hmm. And that, that's something that you're seeing in your field perhaps. And I feel like that's what you were describing. You know, I'm sorry. I, I, I know that went all over the place, but <laughs> I don't know if I made a lot of sense in that, but it just like came, came, so I could see it so very clearly. And I know I didn't do a very good job of explaining it. No wonder my son says that it sounds like I'm on acid or something. <laughs> when you see something from such a different perspective, when you're trying to relate it to, I don't know. Oh, well. well, you know, this is, this is where we just have to, build up our own language and assign our own meanings and say, okay, when I use this word, uh, it's got an additional component to it because I went through this experience. Let me tell you about that. So then you go, you know, fast forward through the experience. And then so, so see what this word that, that I'm giving you here, that, that just means something different to me. Now you've got a clue of what that means. And all of this, uh, conversation back and forth just to come to an understanding about the labels that people put on words and the definitions that that those words are containers for uh it it just takes time and it takes a whole lot of other words and stuff and we're just really hoping that all those other words that we're throwing back and forth we've got you know we're on the same page with as far as what what those mean but when we're talking about experiences and observations that, wow, we, we don't have a precedent for them, they're, they're completely new, then we are literally in no sense. And that's where innocence, the word, comes from. And so uh, to, to not have a sense of anything, how can you describe it? The only tools that you have are substandard because they're they're about all the things you do have sense of this is something it's not any of those you can say well it's kind of like this and it's kind of like that but it's different in these areas that that i haven't totally seen at all and to have beings come onto the same page necessarily means that they've have a shared common experience. <clears throat> so the only reason that you and I can talk back and forth together is because the ex things you've experienced along your journey and the things that I've experienced along my journey 
there's some similarity there. You know, you've grown into a pretty much a bipedal humanoid shaped body. Uh, but you know, you look like a woman, I look like a man. So there's some differences yet. There's some similarities, but yet the fact that you're a woman, like I've got a bunch of experiences in my past about women. So I've, I've got a precedent to put them into, but the, the kinds of things that, that true seekers come across necessarily means that we have to develop our own language to talk about them and to understand because we've been intentionally kept in the darkness. We've been kept in a place where we don't have any sense of this. And so one of the most important things for us is to be able to freely dialogue just like we're dialoguing now. And, you know, that's what that big YouTube purge is all about. Well, there's, there's something else that you said in there that for me, for me personally, uh, in these types of dialogues and you, and you, one of the reasons that you and I are able to converse so freely and I feel because what I see happening a lot and it's happened with me quite a bit, even, um, because you and I both pretty much comprehend that we're going even, okay. So people who grew up together can be sitting in a car together and have an experience together. Like let's say a, a car accident or doesn't even have to be that it could be anything. And even though these two people might even be siblings might have grown up together and known each other since birth, they're still going to experience this experience in a different manner because you and I can have grokked or comprehended, have comprehended that everyone is a totality, a totality of all the experiences they've ever had in their life and their perception of those experiences. And the perception will be a filter. We've talked about that before that has that all of those experiences has been filtered through. And even though you could take people who have been grew up together, but they haven't had all the exact same experiences in their life. They've had different experiences and they can experience something and yet have a completely different experience, even though they're right there side by side because of that filter that we each one of us have. And I think that's been the whole point of source coming into physicality for one thing. That's been the whole point has been the whole reason for doing this. But we forgot that firstly, we forgot that that was it. And when we speak to each other, because the language is supposed to be the language, but my experience of a particular word and your experience of the energetics of a particular word are going to be different <laughs> no matter what. I mean, I've, I've had conversations on YouTube and I thought I was clear about everything I said, but I see comments later. I'm like, wait a minute, that's not what I said, but that's the experience that that person had of what I said. And, and, and that's okay. I, I have to expect that we all, that's my issue. We all, I feel we will all come to expect and know that that's the case. But, but until we do, there's like an expectation. There we go again with that that, well, this is what the word means and this is my experience of it and that's what it is for everybody. N no, no, I, I found out a few years ago that that's, e even the word love, one person's idea and thoughts and feelings about what the word love is can mean something completely different to someone else because of their experience and their, and their perception of that experience. And so 
I feel like the, these kinds of conversations are a little easier maybe because we're aware of that. Not saying that not everybody, because not everybody is true enough, but the more, I think more folks are becoming more aware of that and more allowing. See, there's that, there is an issue too. You know what I mean? Uh, because someone thinks, well, this is what this means and this is the way it should be for everyone. Well, that's your experience of it. Not everyone has that experience. You see what I mean? It's like, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's really a hard, uh, mindset to, to pull out of. And, and when you're sequestered in the dark, and and your particular cocktail of darkness has been fed to you as oh, this is normal this is what you should expect then all of a sudden to come across people that don't have those same types of expectations or have the same normal it's just doesn't compute and and yeah it's triggering how how is it that you allow yourself to do these things that I want to allow myself to do, but no, that's not part of my normal. And wow, it's, it's just triggering right there. Well, see, that's where I feel like what we're seeing with the collective shadow. Yeah. This purging and processing. And I, it's, it's going to get more intense until either the, you know, whatever this, event that's being talked about all the channelings all the you know light worker community has been talking about and feeling coming and whether it's just an energetic or all the little puzzle pieces that seem to be coming into play in regards to all of this mass awakening whatever it is it is definitely building to something. And I feel like the experiences of that chaotic that you were talking about with the shadows coming up and, you know, there's, I, it seems to me like there's, like you were saying, this isn't you, your journey that's, that you're seeing the, your own journey more than likely because there's some of these things that have already been, you have processed through. So you're able to hold space because you can recognize that process that may be coming up, right? Is it, did I comprehend that right? Yeah, I, I think the, the biggest part of holding space for someone who's walking a similar journey to what I've walked is uh, just letting them know that they're exactly where they're supposed to be. And in fact, they couldn't be any other way inside their consciousness and that it's just one piece at a time to to get through it and and the biggest self allowance is to be able to give yourself uh give yourself a day of solitude if you need it that's really what it was about for me it's just you know uh where I'm at with ripping apart all of my perceptions and getting under the hood and, and tearing apart, wow, the, the foundational perceptions that, you know, basically what does love mean? What does peace mean? Uh, what is friendship? What is kindness? Like to, to get in and redefine those terms, uh, when, when you're, when you're doing that work, uh, Sometimes you're just, it's just not the best thing to be out there and engaging and relating with other people because what, how can you, how can you converse? How can you have a relationship when you're like looking at the core of your being and like, what, what is love to me? Like, oh my, what, what's kindness to me? Like, and then once you've got those definitions redefined, then it's time for you to show the universe because the universe is going to bring you experiences. Now you have to say this experience doesn't feel loving to me, even though I used to tell the, the universe, wow, this is love. I've redefined love. And now this same experience, it doesn't feel loving. So I'm making different choices. 
and and just one piece at a time we walk ourselves out the door to just a, a cleaner consciousness a brighter consciousness but gosh there were there were times at the beginning of my journey where i just everywhere i looked inside me it was just a fucking mess an absolute mess it just energetically it seemed like everywhere i went i was that character from snoopy you know pig pen just the the energy going everywhere and to to carve myself the what the years of solitude that that i needed so that i could allow myself to change first i could develop a new normal and then when i go out and engage with people oh this takes me below what i can give myself i don't need that that's not self-serving and after saying no enough and embracing solitude enough now i'm in this new phase where okay just like you were saying it's not my journey to walk i've walked it but wow i'm really feeling for these people that that are in the darkness they don't know where they're at along their journey they're just looking at a big mess when they look inside and so the biggest space that i can give them is to say this is how i started and i think my mess was equally as unpleasant as yours maybe for different reasons but uh but self-love is really acknowledging your mess so that you can get it cleaned up yep yeah yeah i agree it's when i was going just just recently you know this whole thing with uh my separation you know i thought i was headed in the right direction and then I realized I was wandering around still in a lot of pain again going through it just going through the journey you know uh, it looks like chaos at the moment it felt like it too I was running again uh, luckily for me I got a handle on myself before it got a little too late. Cause I, I was, I think I was running away again, running away from everything, you know? <clears throat> um, and there's, I, I'm hoping that whatever it is, that's about to, you know, all these different um, channelers and folks that are coming forward the, with these thoughts and feelings about what's supposed to take place within the next 30 to 60 days, I guess, or, you know, sometime, you know, but there's different, I've heard a lot of things about this event happening in the first quarter of this year, but I've also heard that there's, you know, those that are going to go through another five year trajectory of some of this, whatever these energetics that are presenting themselves now. So who knows, you know, I mean, it's my understanding from a, folks that have been going through this a long time that, you know, there's been dates given before, <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, I don't, I can't put a date on anything um, except really in the rearview mirror. Exactly, me too. But I do feel like something different is happening because because things aren't happening in a vacuum. There are so many different things that that are that are from way different quarters too that are like coming into one big puzzle for me, you know, like the the new executive order that I still haven't gotten to to dig all the way into. Um, you know, all of those different things. It's, it's like, I, I just know they're all involved with all of this overall. What the big, the really huge big thing is, I don't, I don't know, but I feel like all, all of these different things play into it in some level. Well, if it's all, 
you know, it's not in a vacuum anyway. So it's all playing into it. And it's like, it's almost like I can see a, a condensing down of different things, you know, these puzzle pieces that are coming in. I don't know. It's really weird, but. Well, it's fun to watch it. Uh, what condense and coalesce and put itself together. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm still I'm still scratching my head as to what the entire big picture looks like. But uh, from my seat in this now moment, all, all I see are changes that that I really wow. I don't have a lot of precedent to really compare things to, uh, you know, other than just some things that I suppose, you know. Yeah, I know. Me too. Wow. Well, I'm really glad that you came and talked to me today. Yeah, well, we have uh, we have a knack of putting together some some powerful <laughs> stuff, don't we? Yeah. yeah, we do. Just without in I uh, without even thinking about what we're going to talk about, just whatever gets talked about. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's what once you've got gotten far enough along a spiritual journey, and, and by that I really mean you're you're cleaning up your spirit. You're cleaning up your consciousness of, of these perceptions, these old wrong perceptions, whatever, whatever they are. And you do that enough times and then you can pretty much sit down and talk with anyone who's willing to acknowledge for themselves and allow, and you can just have a conversation that, that flows because it's real. And, right. and you don't, you don't have to remember any lines or anything like that. It's just all yeah. I have to do is listen, inspect what the person's telling me, respect it. Okay, I got a feel for it now. It reminds me of this experience that I had. And and that pattern just goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth uh, pretty much indefinitely. Yeah, you know what the key for me is in any kind of conversation like this, though? The key for me is for me to remember that, first of all, I don't have all the answers. And I know I don't. I, I, I really, I already know I don't. I'm open to hearing anything, but I'm not. It's like, um, I'm not trying to sell anybody or anything or trying to sell anybody an idea of anything other either. And I'm not interested, to be honest with you, in anything that has to do with a hierarchy situation anymore. Because there's a lot of that still going on in the collective, you know. Um, the need to look outside of ourselves for something. Um, uh, that didn't come out right. Uh I don't know. I guess I, I've, I've come into contact a lot with, I know we're all still looking for stuff. I get that because we're all looking for the right way. But I, I, for me personally, I want to be empowered. I don't want, I, I, I don't desire to play in a playground where anything has hierarchy over me. I think we are all source. We are all a portion of source. And therefore, um, I view the things that folks are, uh, you know, the corruption and everything that's happened on this planet, in my view, has stemmed from those who have a need or whatever for domination and control. And in some way or another, from religion to whatever dogma there is, there is, and it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's judicial dogma, law enforcement dogma, anything that has, uh, has an order of hierarchy in regards to it, I don't think is necessary, or at least it's not for me. Well, 
ultimately what hierarchy is saying is that there is something outside of yourself that ultimately you are going to use to make decisions or allow your life to be affected, allow somebody else to make decisions for you. And, right. and the full reclamation of our power as uh, creator beings, I guess is the term that, that you use frequently yeah. uh, is to not give that away anymore. Right. We fully pull it in. We, we allow ourselves to make any and all decisions that feel right to us in the moment uh, that are for our highest and best purposes and the highest and best purposes of everyone else. And we're not giving that up anymore. Right. No, exactly. Correct. And that's, that's that. Yeah. Thank you for that. I love the way you put that. Cause that's exactly how I feel. Yep. Lovely. Well, we're in resonance. <laughs> that's great. Well, this has been a fun one to put in the bag. Yeah. Thanks so much for, for coming around. Stick close here for a second. Um, I'm going to put a link to your channel, your YouTube channel in the body of this video, along with uh, the Friends of Conscious Conversation Central Facebook page link and also my email address. So reach out, comment if you like, get in touch with us. Appreciate it. Till next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>